Hi everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to tie a tube fly bait fish. It's a very simple fly, it's a very durable fly and um, it's a very easy fly to tie. Um, why bait fish? Because most of the species that we chase in salt water or fresh water eat small bait fish in some way or the other. So if you're hunting for larger predators, bait fish is a definite must in your fly box. Now this fly is made more or less of very few materials. As you can see, it has a very nice fishy profile. It has a soft head that gives the durability. This is kind of like the bait fish fly's helmet. And then you have American opossum and a little bit of marble fox and everything works greatly together when it swims in the water and it looks very lively. Now this is a surface fly. I want to I wanna fish this particular fly in and around the surface so it's unweighted. That means that it will become floating to intermediate in sinking rate depending a little bit on what hook you put on it. But it's a very nice fly, very easy to tie and um, let's tie one and hopefully you will get inspired in some way. Okay, let's start. I'll start off by mounting the hook guide, Pro Hook Guide XL in black. This will accommodate uh, hooks up to size 10R, so that ought to do the job. Then I'll slide on a nano tube, make sure that the fit is tight, and push everything back on the needle. Now we're ready for start wrapping. The thread I'm using most for most of my tying actually is a GSP thread 75 denier in white. This is a very strong thread off with the snippet. And then I'll take some oval gold tinsel in the medium size. This is just to give a little bit of a decoration at the back end of the fly, which will appear when the fly gets soaked. And going forward the length that I want my back part body to have. Trim. Make sure that is directly underneath. So for the tail I'll use some Pro Marble Fox in the color yellow. Marble Fox is a fantastic material. You can use it for anything. I just take a little bit, take it off. And then I'm going to remove some of that under fur by just combing it so that I'll only have the stiffer fibers left, not the under wool, because I don't want my tail to become too dominant. Make sure that it is at the right length. Go backward approximately to the middle of the body. Just make sure that it goes on top, a few securing wraps, adjust, and then I want to go backward and make sure that when I come to the tie point I give it a few extra wraps, go forward, and then just comb it one time to make sure that no fibers are looped. Just make sure that it's on top so that when the floss come on top of the body here that it is nice and round and, and even off with that. And we will add a little bit of flash to that yellow color, just electric yellow pro angel hair. Just a few strands. I'll Pull it up on the thread, place it in a V, and pull it back. Just make sure that the exit point is spread out across the tube and give it some locking wraps. Oh. And then trim it unevenly with a scissor. Go 
go forward and I'll give two wraps of oval gold tinsel just to give a little bit of sparkly effect and then I want to lock it after the two wraps so when I come with my floss I have an exit point that is directly underneath the hook and I just go forward then I take my silk floss in black lock it down pull it back to secure it trim and then I wrap the entire thing with with the floss keeping the floss flat so it will be nice and even just putting them just beside each other all the way up to the gold tinsel and forward again and locking it with the thread and securing by pulling back and trim. Now it's time to wrap the oval gold tinsel. Three or four wraps I normally use for this body length. As even as possible. And locking it down with the thread. And pulling it back. And trim. So, a little bit of flash. This is Pro Angel Hair Standard in the color red. And I want to have quite long fibers that is not looped. So I'll take some out of the package and just pull until all loops and what's not supposed to be there is gone. And I grab it from the other side, lift it up under the thread, do the V. So that we will have a nice spread to the flash fibers and securing. Now the flash fibers needs a bit of trimming so that they will not stick together when wet. So I'll just take my scissors and let it run through the wing so that the length of the individual fibers will become uneven. That is the approximate length of the fly. I want these flash fibers to just hit the tip where the wing later on will, will hit. Now for the American opossum, I've chosen the color red here. Now I'm gonna comb, I comb all my product before I use them. I just make sure that the underwool is going into the same direction. So now this is quite important because when you cut the hide, you will otherwise cut the underlaying wool if you don't trim it. So I take my, all the fibers go this way down in a straight line and then as you go towards the belly of the animal it will have an angle to it. So it's quite important that you angle the way that you cut. So I'll just put in a V-shaped cut. I want my wing to be approximately nine centimeters. So I'll make my cut here. And, and then I'll go all the way forward to the ends meet and just cut it across. Now you have a beautiful tapered wing of American opossum, very lively in the water. I'm just going to comb it one more time. Now look at the profile of that one. Then I'm going to take my scissor and I'm going to trim the corners just a little bit like this. It'll make it a little bit easier to to tie in. And now they're ready. The wing is ready for for use. So what I'll do is. I will place the tapered flag 
directly on top approximately one centimeters longer forward than the actual tie point and then I'm going to fixate it with my fingers and just going to pull straight down and give it 8 to 10 12 hard wraps with the GSP and it will not go away or go off. Make sure that the fibers underneath is pointing out to the sides. We don't want too much fibers going underneath. It will make the fly tilt if not done probably. And then I'm going to trim. Just go just at the edge of the head. Just let the knife sink into the hide and it will come off nicely. Like this. And you have a beautiful profile. Now I'll secure it one more time. And then it's time for a dubbing loop that we will spin our black American opossum hair in. So I will just go up and lug it around the tube two times around the main line or the main thread and go as closely as possible towards the exit point of the wing and then I'll just go one wrap forward. So now we need some hair. And for the front haggle I've chosen American opossum in the color black. American opossum is a fantastic material. It has a certain gloss to it. Just give it a quick brush. And then we don't need to take too much into consideration about which way the hairs are going uh, compared to the skin because we're going to spin it anyway. So I'll just make approximately five to seven millimeter slip. That is approximately 70 millimeters wide or something like that. And this is going directly into the hair clamp. Just grab it. Pull the, oh, need to have everything. And then just pull it a little bit. Make sure that it goes 90 degrees off from the clamp. And then just cut it. And then we insert the hairs into the dubbing loop and we can spin a very nice haggle with it. So into the loop, just pull and gently release the hairs. Now I use my fingers to go as close as I dare towards the tying thread. The closer you get, the slimmer the stem will be of this hair haggle. So I, I want to go as tight as I can and then start spinning. And this will become a extremely strong and durable and lively swimming style of haggle. So I'll just take my Velcro, pull the fibers out that some will be looped there. So just give it a piece of work over with the Velcro and spin it until it's it's very hard. Oh, there's some fibers going in there. Just take that. And then just spin it. And now we are more or less ready for wrapping. Pull the first wrap of fibers backwards and then as tight as you can without going on top of each other or in top of each wrap. You just wrap it very closely. Make sure that no fibers get looped. Now moisture your fingers and pull the hairs back and you just go forward. Now the advantage with this type of haggle is that when this comes into the water, the fibers will uh, raise very nicely and create a, quite a big silhouette in the water. Just 
push everything back so that it will take minimum amount of space. And then just continue to go forward until you're out of loop. Pull back and secure. Now see how the fibers will stand out very, very nicely from the tube. Just make sure that it doesn't let go. Off with the remains. And then I just push it back as hard as I can, grab it, and then give it some final wraps to make sure that everything will stay there no matter what happens. So, time to pick the soft head. Now, the soft head is available in many sizes. Here it's a four. Ah, that's a bit small. What about the next size? The six millimeter. Yeah, that looks nice. Now it has the good proportions. Let's just try the eight millimeter. Now that is becoming too, a little bit too big, but would be okay, but a little bit too big. So I'll go for the six millimeter head on this one. Yeah. Okay, time to secure the head. And for that, I'll just use some Sabagap glue. And just a fair amount. This will make sure that it will not unravel. Push the soft head back. Let it sit for 10 seconds. Push it a little bit upwards. Just let it dry before you cut the tying thread off. Like this. Now we're ready to cut off the remaining tube. So off with the fly. Now we want to cut approximately one millimeter in front of the soft head. Like this. Back on the needle. And then we're going to give it a little bit of heat and it rolls up very nicely and uh, just to secure that we still got a hole through the tube. Okay, now we're going to put up some eyes and to make sure that the eyes will stay there we're going to open up the plastic and we do this with nail polish remover. Uh, we will just put a little bit on each surface where we will tie in the pro cool eye. So we'll just go in there, make sure that none of this gets on the outside surface. So you can just remove that with the other end of, of the cotton stick. See how that boils up? That will make it very, very acceptable to the adhesive which the cool, cool eyes have. On the other side as well, uh, just give it a good soak like this and then you just remove the surplus and the sockets on the soft heads is more or less ready so we're going to pick an eye and um, I will have the pro cool eye six millimeter in the color silver makes a very realistic eye when you dome it with the UV resin afterwards. So the socket and the eye matches perfectly so you just lay it in there. Make sure that it's, it, it got, got contact with the entire surface so just push it hard down there. And the same thing with the other side. Now I'm going to add some UV resin. Now the UV resin will make the contour of the eye follow the soft head extremely nice because the surface tension of the UV resin will 
yeah, it will follow the socket and bend of the soft head. Now you can see the bubbles that is in the UV resin. Just give it a little bit of heat from a lighter and all the bubbles will go away. It's a trick from rod building. And then buzz it with the UV light and within a few seconds you will have the perfect surface with an integrated 3D eye. Same procedure on the other side. Just put in some UV resin in there. Just see how the the drop will fill the the socket. And then we're gonna remove bubbles with the lighter, and we're gonna sap it with the light, and it is more or less ready to go. So if you look at it from the top you can see that the shape of the soft, soft head is completely streamlined and everything is integrated and it is very nice. Now the final thing I need to do is to trim the hook guide because I'm not going to use a monster hook here. Trim it off and then I'm going to insert the hook into the silicon hook guide and the bait fish is done. So Now that came out pretty okay. Remember you can always make these in either smaller or much larger sizes. Um, but it is the basic principle that you cut a triangle tapered flag and you, you tie it in and you, you make a hair haggle and you have uh, something that will really swim and melt together when it, it's, it's wet. So yeah, that was all for today. Thank you for watching and uh, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.